I don't imagine that there is a woman in all of the world can send her child or her man just go to die. They think we are working all of this life to give them something and to let them die in a minute? Can you? The suffering, the persecution of Christians, they've been robbed of their heritage. They've been robbed of their ancestral lands. They've been robbed of their culture. Some of the first converts to the teachings of Jesus were Palestinians. So that's how long Christians have been in uh, that land. Their quarter, the Christian quarter, has been really, really decimated and taken over and sliced up. That has really uh, bled the Christian community to where they're less than 2% of the population now. The presence of a Christian community within uh, the Holy Land, can you imagine where, where Jesus first stepped foot will no longer be there? I know both from the moral sense and from the practical sense that the only way to, to stop the violence is to treat the, the root cause from which the violence has started. The number one myth that, that Westerners have about this conflict is that Arabs and Jews have been fighting for thousands of years and they're going to continue to fight. This is really quite bizarre because all it takes is a little bit of reading of history to find out that this just isn't true. There is no congenital historical enmity between the Arabs and the Jews. The Jews flourished in the Arab world at a time when they were being persecuted throughout all of Europe. At the end of the 19th century, because of anti-Semitism in Europe, European Jews began to try and figure out a solution to the Jewish problem. A very small minority adhered to Zionism, the idea that the only place in which they could be safe is within the Jewish state. Zionist Jews um, actually had a, a design on uh, the land of Palestine, the idea of creating a homeland for Jews in the land of Palestine. And this uh, is really the beginning of the conflict. The mainstream Israeli Jewish society believed, because that's the way they had been educated, that Palestine was empty, had been empty when the Jewish settlers came there. Who paid the price when they settled there? Is it really true that Israel was a land without a people for a people without a land? Palestine was not empty. It was a land populated by Arabs who had a high level of culture, high level of education with farms and markets and towns and villages and roads and commerce and lots of interaction with the rest of the world. The population was overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly Arab. Jewish immigration increased under British rule following World War I when Britain implemented the Balfour Declaration, promising a Jewish homeland in Palestine. This measure conflicted with Britain's previous promise of self-rule for Arab inhabitants throughout the region. Britain was basically extremely supportive of the Zionist movement. It helped to establish all of the structures of a state. At the same time, the Arabs of Palestine were denied the right of self-determination. The Palestinians saw a European power decide the future of a non-European territory in flat disregard of both their presence and wishes. In the 1920s, as land was being stripped away from local residents, the first clashes between Palestinians and Jews began and would continue on for years to come.
Until the early 1930s, the Jewish population of Palestine remained under 17%. Hitler's rise to power in Germany completely changed that. In just five years, 174,000 Jews flooded into Palestine, doubling their population. As the world attempted to make amends for the horrors of Nazi genocidal policies, efforts to make Palestine a Jewish homeland increased. The Palestinians, they were not the Nazis. They were not responsible for the Holocaust. But they were the ones who paid the price. In 1947, with the conflict spiraling out of control, Britain decided to turn the problem of Palestine over to the United Nations. The UN, under pressure, proposed to divide the land into two states an Arab state and a Jewish state. Arabs were to be given 43% of the land, despite the fact that they made up more than two-thirds of the population and owned over 92% of the land. Jews were to be given 56%, although they comprised only one-third of the population and owned less than 8% of the total area. Nevertheless, they were given not only most of the land, they were given the most fertile land. Zionist leaders took advantage of their superior military preparation and immediately began occupying major Arab cities in Palestine. I was among the people that conquered Akov. When we were walking around, we entered the flat. There was a pair of shoes of a small child, maybe two years old. They didn't have time to put on the shoes, so they left the shoes and they ran away. They left everything. We found out that there was a systematic expulsion of Palestinians, and there was, as I said, there was an ethnic cleansing operation taking place. The most infamous campaign was the massacre at the village of Der Yassin, where over 100 men, women, and children were systematically murdered. the ruthlessness of the attack on Dar Yassin drove fear and panic into the Palestinian population and led to the flight of unarmed civilians from their homes all over the country. As a result, maybe 300 or so thousand Palestinians had already been expelled before the first Arab soldier entered Palestine. Some of the neighboring Arab armies finally intervened after May 15, 1948, when Israel officially announced its statehood. Although there was a lot of war rhetoric on the Arab side, very few soldiers, Arab soldiers, were sent into the battlefield. And actually, for most parts of the war, there was a superiority uh, on the side of the Israeli uh, army. The Israeli army cleansed much of the territory and took over a large part of the designated Palestinian state. 
The new state of Israel encompassed 78% of the total land of Palestine. The West Bank came under Jordanian control and the Gaza Strip under Egyptian dominion. Although a truce was declared between Israel and the Arab states, true peace remained elusive as over 700,000 Palestinian refugees languished in nearby camps, often in sight of homes to which they still held the deeds and a deep desire to return. Most of the deserted and evicted Palestinian uh, villages were erased from upon the earth and were either turned into Jewish settlements or into a fertile uh, land. Of the 500 Palestinian villages in what became in Israel in 1948, 400 were destroyed. These efforts to destroy the possibility of their returning home were countered by the United Nations, which continues to affirm their human right enshrined in international law and morality to return. A Palestinian who had lost her land or lost his land uh, as the result of the, the creation of Israel in 1948 cannot come back even for a visit. I can go back to Israel as if I were returning and claim immediate citizenship, having no historic tie, speaking no Hebrew, knowing no one in the country, having no family who ever was there. All that one needs is being Jewish, a religious group like any other. The events of 1948 were a defining moment for the Middle East, and from that point onward created instability throughout the region. Violent tensions continued and led to another war in 1967. In that war, Israel occupied the remainder of historic Palestine, what is known today as the West Bank and Gaza. Another myth was that Israel was about to be pushed into the sea, but I was working in the State Department at that time. There was no question of Israel being pushed into the sea. The question was just the rapidity and the totalness of the Israeli victory, and the victory was, was crushing. During the 1967 war, Israel displaced more than 400,000 Palestinians, half of whom were 1948 refugees displaced for a second time in less than two decades. It became clear that the world was not going to address their plight. Palestinians in Israel lived as third-class citizens of a state whose core identity excluded them, while those in the newly occupied territories and abroad continued as dispossessed refugees. The United Nations passed resolution after resolution affirming their rights. Leaders of surrounding Arab nations verbally championed their cause, but failed to take action. Finally, Palestinians took matters into their own hands. There was a mass uprising, in Arabic and intifada shaking off, as people throughout the West Bank and Gaza Strip rebelled. The Israeli government adopted a strategy, in the words of Defense Minister Itzhak Rabin, of might, power, and beatings, which became known as the Break the Bones strategy. Thousands. 